Welcome everybody. Welcome to our Zoom educational series. Today we will be talking with Liz. Liz is with the Social Security Administration and she will be talking about scams and fraud and all kinds of things. Uh, a lot of what might be happening and going on right now with the pandemic that's specific to that. I wanted to kind of explain why you're seeing Liz on a slide, a picture of her and not her in person. Um, she does have some uh, regulatory issues with being with the Social Security Administration. So if she could show us her pretty face and be live, I'm sure she would, but she was just kind enough to say, hey, let's get on there. So she's gonna be going through um, a slideshow and talking about some real interesting things. I'm gonna be actually running the slideshow for her. So it's a little bit different than some of the Zooms that we've done, but um, certainly we will be able to get through it and um, hopefully everybody will learn quite a lot. Um, one other note is we are doing lots of different educational events online over the next couple of months. And uh, you can find that on our website, which is Senior Advocate dot live l i v e and um, these are all free and so we we would love for you to join us and um, if nothing else it gives everybody something to do while we're all um, still trying to to isolate and stay safe so um liz just tell us a couple of things tell us a little bit about yourself and what you guys are doing right now during this pandemic are you working from home yeah i'm um, definitely uh to update everybody with what's going on at this time, um, we are, so on March the 19th, all of our offices, we had to transition from being in the office due to social distancing to doing everything that we were doing before, but we're all doing it via the telephone. So, or you can do it online. Of course, our online services are also available 24 seven, um, but pretty much we had to all transition. So the local offices, every, if you call your local office, they will be able to answer your question. So all it's doing is it's being forwarded over to somebody who's working from home and they're answering calls. So again, we're doing everything that we would be doing if we were in the office, like taking a claim, retirement, disability, Medicare, um, you know, talking to you about any um, issues you might be having with overpayments or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, and, um, and we're doing this, the transactions that we were doing, updating your address, your phone number, direct deposit. All you need to do is either contact your local office, but it is easier if you do have a My Social Security account um, because you can do a lot of the transactions without even sending anything in the mail. So, for example, if you lose your Social Security card, um, you can get your card online. As long as you're over the age of 18 and is a uh, U.S. citizen, you're just asking for a replacement Social Security card instead of mailing in your proofs. And because we do have people working um, in the offices, just a skeleton crew, because most of us are working from home. Um, like I said, we're doing claims and answering calls and everything from our, our home just to, uh, for social distancing. Um, but we do uh, have a skeleton crew that goes into each office and they're doing administrative duties. Like they're, they're taking care of the mail and they're associ associating it with who's working that case. Um, so um, you can, instead of mailing things in though, for your proofs or whatever it is that you're trying to do, if you, we have lots of services that we offer online. So we're definitely promoting that. Um, but um, everything has been transitioned to um, telephone or mail or online. Um, we don't know when the offices will be open. The most common question <laughs> I receive is when will you guys be open again? Um, what they're doing is they're trying to make sure um, that everything is safe and secure. They have to get equipment for all of our offices nationwide. So we're not going with what the state is doing like phase one, phase two, because we do serve the most vulnerable population. You know, we serve the elderly and the disabled and then everybody else who needs to come in to do transactions like take care of their social security card or whatever it is that they're trying to do. So um, we don't have a date of when we will be opening. Um, and, and right now for education and outreach, um, Stephanie um, and the senior advocacy and her mom have been a great partner with Social Security. We've gone to their events. They've invited us many times um, to do retirement briefs and different types of briefs. 
So right now what we've done is because everything is online or on the phone, <laughs> we're doing outreach also with webinars. Um, so again, if, if you or an organization needs to do an outreach event or wants to do an outreach event, there are a lot of people that are losing their jobs. Um, you know, we have about 41 million or more that have filed for unemployment because of this pandemic. So, you know, disability is something people are looking into if they were working with a disability or if they were debating on whether to take their retirement or not and they were working and now they've lost their jobs you know, um, they might be considering doing a retirement application. So we do webinars um, as well for disability and retirement so that, you know, we can help people. And there's a lot of webinars like this one um, that are free and open to the public. So, um, um, yeah, so I have information on retirement, disability going out, as well as um, scam awareness, and just the Q&A session. If somebody just wants to, got a letter from the Social Security office, um, I'm hosting um, Ask Liz Anything SSA, <laughs> and those are just Q&A sessions that are open to ask any questions um, with an organization or whoever would, would want to host one. So, yeah. And Liz, where would they find all of those um, webinars? <clears throat> Um, well, I've been sending, it depends on who's hosting it. So um, as I'm hosting it, I'm sending it out to all of my contacts. Um, so we don't have anything online with that because they, we get requests for a webinar. We're staying busy, actually more busier than we were when the office was open. <laughs> so definitely getting it out to all of our contacts. And if our contacts share it with their newsletters and everything, that's great. Um, but yeah, um, so as, as soon as I get a webinar, I think I sent like four today, this morning, including this one. Um, so as soon as I get it, I'm sending it out to all the different organizations and, and they're really great uh, about advertising it and letting the community know about the webinars. And if somebody just wants to reach me directly, um, you know, you can, uh, uh, you have my email address, you're more than welcome to share that. And if somebody wants to reach me directly, um, they can. And that way uh, we can set something up with your group as well or another group, yeah. Okay, and we will also, uh, we will be posting, uh, as we do for any organization um, for free, we post events on our website, again, senioradvocate.live. So I know I saw a few new ones come out from Liz today. So um, if you wanna follow up and find out what else she's doing, um, just give me till the end of today. I'll go online. I'll make sure that those events are put on our website. That way you can take them, you can share them. And one other note before we get into the presentation. So Liz is the public affairs specialist. Um, I know she's so great. And when she has spoken at our meetings before, uh, people always ask, can I have her number? I want to call her and ask her some questions. So she doesn't actually do that piece of it. Um, and so I'm just letting you know now before you call me and say, we want to talk to her. We have certain questions. She does a webinar. She's great. But in terms of, I guess, um, your, actually social, your actual social security benefits, that's something that you would have to call the main number, go online, and then talk to the specialist on that end. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did I get that right, Liz? Yeah, you can okay. call your local office. Um, you can call the 1-800-772-1213 number, or you can check out our website, um, socialsecurity.gov. And on our homepage, you could even set up your My Social Security account. And like I said, it's great. I mean, I have one. We used to send out those green and white statements in the mail. We stopped mailing those out because of identity theft. People steal people's mail, which we're going to be going over today. Um, so, you know, it's great. So you can keep up with what, you're, what you've worked and what you've paid into. You can do transactions like update your address, your phone number, your direct deposit, get your 1099. If you're on Medicare, you can get your Medicare card replaced. Um, you can, um, like I said, get your social security card replaced. So, you know, it has, you don't have to go into the office and, and wait in line and wait for something to happen for you if you just uh, and show your ID and all of that. If you're already registered online with an account, again, you can do a lot of these transactions from your home and even print whatever it is that you need to print. So yeah. Okay, very good. Well, we're gonna go right into your presentation. Uh, Liz is gonna be presenting Protecting You from Fraud and Abuse. I am going to now share my screen so that we can all go through the uh, slides with her. And uh, let's see, tell me what, are you seeing the slideshow now? 
Yes, I am. Okay, let me go ahead and get right to this, and hopefully everyone is seeing what I'm seeing. So um, I'm going to be actually doing this on my end. So Liz, you just tell me when you want me to go to the next, and we'll go from there. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I am going to request everybody, I, I, um, if everybody's going to get uh, an email of this PowerPoint, you'll get a PDF version. Um, but if I do, re I do recommend that uh, there's going to be some good phone numbers that I'm going to be presenting out to you um, on these slides. So if you can, go ahead and please um, have a pen and piece of paper and take notes. Um, because if you want to, if you're tired of getting those scam calls, there's a do not call list <laughs> that you can call into. So I do recommend taking some notes if possible. All right. So we're going to be covering three uh, topics today. So the next slide um, talks about the three topics that we're going to be discussing, which is scam awareness, elder abuse, and identity theft. Now, during COVID, of course, scammers follow headlines, right? And COVID has been a very uh, big headline in the news since March, right? So like I said, what, what the, there are some recent scammers because um, scammers follow headlines um, that scam calls that people have been receiving. The most common one everybody knows about even from before is that your social security number has been suspended. That is not true. Your social security number never gets suspended because we are taking care of business over the phone. Yes, if you've initiated an appointment with us or if you've initiated a contact with us, we will absolutely be calling you because that's the only way we can get in touch with you for customer service purposes. However, we will never threaten you. We will never ask you for money. So if you get a strange call like that, just know that's not social security. And I will be going over the website to where you wanna record or report those calls because it does go to our Office of Inspector General, which is a partnership that we have with the Federal Trade Commission. And um, they're able to track the zip codes of where most of these calls are coming from. But when it comes to COVID, um, I will say there's a new scam with Medicare um, and they're calling people and they're telling people that they're gonna send them a free COVID test kit if you can provide them your Medicare number. Because remember, your Medicare number used to be your social security number. It is no longer your social security number, it's now an alphanumeric number. So they're gonna wanna access that and possibly do some sort of fraudulent billing. So again, do not give out your information unless you've initiated that call and you know exactly who you're talking to. Um, and if somebody does call you, um, you wanna find online or get their actual legitimate phone number um, through a, um, you know, through a, um, through a um, legitimate site, you know, a legitimate way where you're getting their phone number, an actual phone number to whatever company they're calling you from, and then call that company and see if it's legitimate. Because after those social security fraud calls, most of the calls that we were answering were because people were asking, why is their number suspended? And unfortunately, there was a lot of financial loss um, in 2019 um, when a lot of these calls were happening. So the next slide is going to be understand the threats, exercise caution, and secure your information. And that's on three, and that's on scam awareness. So like I mentioned, you understand the background that if somebody calls and says your social security number is suspended, you know your number will never be suspended. If you remember looking at those green and white statements, you know that even after you pass away, your family members get survivor benefits, right? So you know that number is never suspended. So that's not true. Um, we have heard at the social security office that these scammers are giving out some other people's social security numbers. And now they think that this is their new social security number because they paid them a, a, some amount of money. So just know that that is not, um, so you wanna understand these threats. You really wanna understand that they're not um, true. If you feel like it's suspect, it probably is. So you wanna exercise caution. And that's why I said that if you feel like this person's a scammer, you wanna hang up find out, go online or find out where an actual customer service number is, and then you want to call them because you definitely want to secure your information. Like I mentioned, the Social Security Administration's Office of Inspector General continues to receive reports from across the country about fraudulent phone calls from people claiming to be from Social Security. Scam artists 
go to great lengths to trick you and uh, trick you out of your personal information or money. Three ways to protect yourself. Understand the threats. Fraudsters use several forms of impersonation, advance fee, and phishing schemes. They might contact you and claim to be from Social Security or the IRS or another government agency and request your information. They might claim that you have won the lottery or became eligible for an investment um, if you pay an upfront fee, right? So that's your, um, that's your uh, caution if they're asking for an upfront fee. Because if you won the lottery, you're, you already paid for your lottery ticket, right? So there, there shouldn't be a fee. Um, <laughs> they might design emails or text messages that look legitimate and request your immediate response. So the most recent scam, as you guys know, is an automated recording stating that your social security number has been suspended for suspicion of illegal activity and that you must call the number provided or your assets will be frozen. So if you call the number and provide personal information, the scammer can use it to commit some sort of identity theft or, uh, identity theft or fraud. So you want to be aware of these types of schemes so you can identify them and, and be safe, uh, safeguard against them. Now, Liz, you want to exercise. Liz, can I just jump in? Do you want, am I supposed to be forwarding the slide or are we still on this one? No, we're still on this slide. Okay. I'm just going through each bullet. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So the second one, uh, the second bullet talks about exercising caution. Exercise caution. In general, no government agency or reputable company will call you or email you unexpectedly and request your personal information or request advance fees for services in the form of wire transfers or gift cards. Number one, the IRS should not be calling you and threatening you. Social Security will not be calling you and threatening you. And they will never ask you for any money. They, they should, uh, the most common thing we've heard of is Google Play cards. Um, we, we will never ask you for money or Google Play cards. In fact, Social Security is in the business of giving you money, right? Because <laughs> you worked and paid into it. So we take your claim for you unless you've um, done something and you have an overpayment like you've worked while getting benefits or, you know, uh, something had happened. But no, we will never say, hey, we want a Google Play card. That's not something we would do. Um, but it does happen, unfortunately. And I, I noticed at the Walmart nearby my house, I noticed that there was a screen and it had uh, the social security language on it that if you're buying a gift card and if, if you're thinking it's for social security, it is a fraud or if, you know, so just know that we would never ask you for things like that. You also want to build a habit of verifying the identity of anyone who asks you for your personal information over the phone and say you will respond through the entity's customer service channels. If anyone pressures you to provide information or money over the phone, it's a scam and you should just hang up. Now, during this, um, during COVID, uh, I've been trying to help the field office with certain, um, with certain cases. So when I'm calling them, like um, we have a case uh, that we have to do, we have to do something for people that are over the age of 100, they're over 100 years old, and they're not using their Medicare card, right? But they're still receiving a check. So of course that makes us worry, like why are they not using their Medicare if they're close to 100 years old, but they're still receiving a social security check? Is everything okay? Is somebody else, you know, taking their money? So we have to make these calls uh, for people to see if you know they're okay, you know <laughs> what's going on, and we, to kind of like a wellness check, right? And that's one of the things that um, we do. So I have that caseload to do, and I was calling people, and come to find out, a lot of people didn't believe I was from Social Security, and rightfully so, right? So I have to prove who I am and provide the one eight hundred number to let them know that this is me. I provide you know my work cell phone number, my work number to let them know that this is me. This is my name, <laughs> you know. So then they'll go ahead and they'll talk to me. So again, if you know you want to be cautious because not everybody's going to be a legitimate uh, person that's calling you, right? Now, secure your information. You want to store your social security card, of course, in a secure location. Avoid carrying it with you. Um, you want to shred documents and list personal information, such as your social security number and banking information. Avoid opening emails from unknown sources or clicking on suspicious hyperlinks. Equip your computing devices with strong antivirus software and maintain strong passwords. And you want to definitely check your credit reports regularly for suspicious activity. And of course, I'm going to provide you the link um, on what 
how you would go ahead and you would report that. And if you look on the bottom of that uh, slide, you'll notice to report fraud, that is the direct link, which is HTPP, HTTPS, um, OIG, which is for Office of Investigation General, dot SSA dot gov. So um, you do want to definitely report that. Now, sorry, the next slide talks about scam awareness and social security. So um, we, do, like I said, we're going to contact you because right now, um, especially during COVID-19, we're doing everything over the phone. So we do contact citizens, generally people who have ongoing business with us, um, by telephone or customer for customer service. However, we will never threaten you. Like I said before, we will not state um, that, you're face, that you face potential arrest or any type of legal action if you uh, fail to provide any information. In those cases, that call is fraudulent and you should give up, do not give out any of your information. Now, in addition to that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go through in addition to that, I will say, if you feel like it's too good to be true, like I said, or if it's, a, it's an issue, even if you think, even if it's a legitimate call, okay, even if it's a legitimate call, but you're not sure, there is no harm in trying to report it to the oig.ssa.gov slash report. So I will say, even if, because they'll be able to verify that if it was a, a, true, a, a true call or not, but like I said, you can definitely contact the local social security office. And we can definitely help you figure out if it's an actual legitimate call, maybe you had something that was going on, or if it was definitely a fraud call, okay? Now, the next slide I'm gonna go over is gonna go over elder abuse. Um, the slide, I will say, like I said, uh, Social Security has been around a very, very long time. Uh, we were passed about 85 years ago uh, with Franklin D. Roosevelt during the New Deal. Um, so we've been around a very long time, and it has been a very dynamic program. Um, we first started with just retirement, and then, of course, we do family benefits, spousal benefits, disability benefits. <laughs> so we cover a whole range of different benefits as people need it um, uh, during the time, as times have changed. So more than, for more than 80 years, Social Security has helped people, you know, making sure that they have enough security for when they start, when they think about retirement, right? The first program was the retirement benefit, right? So we definitely want to help people with financial information and benefits. Um, and we also want to provide people a safety net throughout their life's journey. But unfortunately, millions of seniors suffer from elder abuse. And there are several forms of mistreatment, including physical abuse, neglect, or financial exploitation. So each year, the older Americans lose more than $2.6 billion per month because of these crimes. So, and, and according to the Administration for Community, Community Living. So definitely, you want to make sure that, you know, you are very cautious, right? So raising awareness for el of elder abuse is extremely important for Social Security and the Office of Inspector General because many of our SSA customers are seniors and most of them depend on somebody to receive and manage their Social Security benefits and they want to make sure that they're paying their bills, right? So it is important to learn the signs and increase awareness of these threats to seniors and to be able to help identify um, and prevent cases of elder abuse, okay? So that's why we have a section on elder abuse. Um, the next slide goes into the different, um, the, red, the red flags. So prevent elder abuse and financial exploitation. You definitely wanna spot the red flags, right? So there are a number of red flags um, that suggest that a person is probably um, assessed, you know, that might be engaged in elder abuse. I do like all of these groups like senior advocacy, a senior advocate, because it actually brings people together, right? Um, because people can talk to others and they can know, okay, this, you know, this is, oh, this thing was suspicious, you know, or this thing is normal. So you have that community. And I love that because um, seniors need that. As they're getting older, they need that. Um, because one of the the number one red flag for a senior who might be dealing with elder abuse is isolation, right? Um, especially if it's by the caregiver, because they don't know any better. If the caregiver says, hey, you have, uh, you know, you have this going on, if it doesn't seem right to one of their friends or something, then they can say, hey, this doesn't seem right. But if it's just that person, they're going to trust their caregiver, right? So unfortunately, that's the number one um, red flag is isolation. 
The second one is unpaid bills or utilities that have been turned off. Uh, again, unusual or quick changes in a will or any type of financial documents. And then of course, missing meds or missing medications, bruises or welts, especially if it's on the face. Um, even if you are not certain that elder abuse is taking place, you can always go ahead and report any type of suspicious abuse so a professional can investigate it. So it is important um, you know, that people do stay connected. Um, so the second thing is saying that you wanna stay connected, you wanna prevent the isolation. Elders without strong social networks face a greater risk of abuse, neglect, or exploitation. It is up to all of us to ensure that our communities are supporting and engaging older adults. One simple way to do this is by just staying in touch with other older adults in the community. Knock on your neighbor's door and just say hi, or start an intergenerational book club or a movie night. You can also support community efforts to empower elders and fight isolation. Ask by volunteering to deliver meals or serve as a long-term care, uh, you know, long care provider. Now, avoid sharing personal information. Never place personal information like your social security number, credit card over the phone. You never give out that information over the, unless you've called, unless you've of course placed the call and you know exactly whom to you're speaking. You wanna sign up for direct deposit. Now social security is huge about signing up for direct deposit um, because you wanna make sure that your money is going right to your bank account. And if you feel like there's been a problem and you've missed a check, if you have a My Social Security account, you could go right in and make sure that your account is up to date, right? That your direct deposit and everything is fine. You can always call one of our local offices as well. Right now, I do recommend that that's the only thing you can do is to call one of us, um, or you can definitely check online. Make sure your address, your phone number, your direct deposit, and everything is fine, you know, in case you do feel like your identity or something has been tampered with. Um, again, you want to sign up for direct deposit of all of your incomes, like your other checks, your VA pensions, your unemployment, whatever other checks you're receiving, so that things like your pensions and Social Security goes right to your secured account. So again, Social Security definitely, with any claim we do, we definitely recommend direct deposit. You can have your checks go directly um, to, to the mail, but we also have a card. It's called a Direct Express card, and it's like a check card with a MasterCard logo on it. And if you need that, because right now you have your checks going in the mail, uh, you can ask for that Direct Express card as well. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a check card, and you can use it wherever MasterCard is used. So um, definitely you wanna do that. Now the slide after that, is more tips. <laughs> so again, you wanna consult with someone you trust. Don't be pressured or intimidated into an immediate decision. Don't sign any documents that you don't completely understand without first consulting an attorney or a family member that you trust. Shred documents. You wanna tear up or shred documents with personal information before disposing of them in the trash. If you are offered a prize or a loan or an investment and it sounds too good to be true, like I said, it probably is. Now, the next slide, I'm gonna ask you if you want to get rid of people calling you, there is a way that you can do that. You can get on the national do not call list and you can reduce telemarketing calls. Not saying that it might take it away 100%, but it might help with the reduction. You can visit the website, which is www.donotcall.gov or you can call them on 1-888-382-1222, okay? Now, if, you're, if you suspect fraud or exploitation, please contact the Office, the office of Investigation General. Like I said, if you even, even if you suspect it, you can call them, at, you can email it, you can email the report and do the um, fraud report at https oig.ssa.gov, and you can even do slash report to get to that report section. Um, if you suspect elder abuse, you wanna call the elder locator at the elder care locator at 1-800-677-1116, or you can visit the website eldercare.hcl.gov to connect with a local reporting, uh, to, to report it. Now, you can also go to the website to learn more about it at www.ncea.gov.
www.acl.gov. Like I said, you definitely want to have your your um, your notes, your, your no, uh, sorry, your pens and papers out so you can take notes. Um, in addition to these tips, uh, tips, there's a variety of local resources in your community to help address elder abuse. Of course, there's adult protective service agencies investigate and can respond to a suspected abuse. Um, there's different programs that advocate for residents of, like of, of care facilities. The area aging, the area agency on aging and the aging disability resource centers offer meals, health and wellness programs and caregiver support programs for older Americans and Older American Act legal services providers can also help. Now, if you're in Southeast um, part of Virginia, uh, our Department of Aging is of course the South Senior Services of Southeast um, Virginia. Um, but I know that, like I said, if you are with a group, just like the different programs that Senior Advocate um, does, um, you know, that's, that is helpful. That's more helpful than what you can imagine because somebody else who's isolated, they don't have that connection. They don't have that group. So it's definitely um, good to stay connected. You know, make sure you stay, um, even right now, make sure you contact your friends, call them, see what they're up to, you know, make sure everything is okay. And again, those are resources as well that you can make sure that you have. Um, the next slide talks about identity theft. What? Now, identity theft is the number one crime in the United States. So, um, and I'm sure you guys are aware. So the second, uh, the next slide talks about in 2019. So there were over 3.2 million reports of fraud, identity theft, and other reports to the Federal Trade Commission in 2019. Now the Federal Trade Commission are those that um, handle any type of identity theft situations. So one in 10 people lost money in imposter scams in 2019, totaling $667 million. This is important because reporting, you want to definitely report that with the website. You definitely want to report that you've been um, possibly, um, you've been a victim of identity theft so that they know this, they can keep a record of this. So it is important to record or report um, if you have been a victim of identity theft. Identity theft, as you know, is one of the fastest growing crimes in the United States. You want to protect your personal identification number, your PIN number, because thieves may have access to existing PINs. As you know, there are so many different um, things we hear about in the news with Target, uh, different, you know, different, um, different companies get their information breached, right? So you definitely want to make sure that you keep yourself personal. If you can pay with cash, I prefer to pay with cash because that way they don't have your information, especially if you're out in like a farmer's market or some sort of um, bazaar type of situation. You want to make sure that you do uh, like a festival situation. You want to try to pay with cash because there's a lot of independent vendors. Um, so definitely you want to do that. Of course, you don't want to write down your passwords, but if you do, you want to keep them in a safe place. Uh, like a hidden purse or a wallet or a desk drawer. You want to memorize it. You want to try not to write it down. You want to refrain from using your mother's maiden name. And of course, you want to try avoiding the last four digits of your social security number, right? Because somebody has your social security number, they probably will know the last four digits, right? So you don't want to use that as your pin. Um, the next slide talks about examples and impact of identity theft. So um, again, if you open up opening... So an example could be a lot of people are opening up a bunch of credit cards, right, uh, with your name on it. Of course, the impact is that you're going to be denied credit or loans, right? Um, opening up utility accounts, denial of public health benefits or public benefits, applying for a tax refund, you know, getting a loan, um, getting Medicare, getting medical care, illegal use of your social security numbers has impacts as well because you have denial of medical care, harassment by debt collectors, lawsuits, stress, anxiety, embarrassment, and of course time and money that you spent, right, on trying to recover the steps. So how do you do this, right? So the next um, slide talks about, I'm gonna go directly into social security and then I'll go into what, you, what steps you can do uh, so that you can try to um, figure out how you can recover your information or recover your identity without having um, without a lot of stress, right? So your social security number, the biggest thing we get at social security is, well, somebody said that they called, um, or I'm a victim of identity theft, I need a new social security number. Unfortunately, 
Um, we cannot provide you a new social security number, but we can try to help you. Social security administers, um, social security administration protects your social security number and keeps your records confidential. So for example, let's say you had an ex-spouse and they're trying to see if they can get additional benefits off of your record, right? We cannot give them your social security number. They, we will ask them, hey, can we have their name and their birthday and where they were born? If you're able to provide that information, we can look it up, you know, to see if you can get benefits or not, you know, what the situation is, but we are not allowed to provide them your social security number. In fact, if you're receiving social security checks, we cannot tell anybody that you're getting a check or not unless you have a representative payee that is handling your benefits because they would know, right? But if somebody else contacted us, like a neighbor, a friend, somebody who's trying to help you, a family member, or um, they wanna know if you have other people on, on your record, we are not allowed to share that information. That is um, PII, which is personal, identification, personal identifying information, and we are not allowed to share that at all. Um, so you should be careful about, like I said, sharing your number um, even when you're asked for it. Definitely, you don't wanna give out your social security number because you might be giving it out to somebody and you don't know if you can trust them. You wanna keep your card and other documents that show your social security number in a safe place. Like I said, we sent out new Medicare cards to everybody who was on Medicare um, that was still, you know, still had an active card on Medicare. We, we, we uh, asked them to shred their old cards, but then we sent out new cards with alphanumeric numbers, kind of like what the DMV does. It used to be our social security number and now everybody has a new customer number. Same thing with Medicare. You should have gotten a new card uh, with a new social with a new um, identity number, it's supposed to be alphanumeric, so that you're not walking around with your social security card. Now, like I said, scammers follow headlines, so now they're trying to call you and scam you by saying, "Hey, we're going to send you this, or we're going to send you a COVID test kit." So please go ahead and provide us your social, uh, your Medicare number, your new number, right? So they can try to do fraudulent billing. Again, do not give out your information, even if it seems convincing because um, it's probably not right, right? Um, but you definitely um, want to make sure that if something has your social security number on it, you do not, you have it in a safe place. And of course, do not routinely carry your card or other documents that display your number. Now, what do you need to do if you feel like you've been a victim of identity theft, right? So the next slide talks about that. Number one, you wanna call the companies that you know um, that fraud occurred. So of course, when you check your credit report and you see that there was a charge with this company, then of course you wanna call that uh, credit card or call that company and, and you know, make sure that your credit card is canceled and then call the company and see you know, what's going on with that. So definitely call the companies that you know that fraud was occurred. That's why you wanna be proactive. Number two, you wanna place a fraud alert and get your credit reports. And number three, you want to report identity theft to the Federal Trade Commission. Now, how do you report your identity theft to the Federal Trade? You can definitely use the website, identitytheft.gov. Okay, you can use the website as well. But I have additional information, phone numbers that you can use as well. So the next slide, when you try to contact the identitytheft.gov, um, online, uh, you can go, they're gonna ask you for um, some information, right? Number one, you're gonna have to explain what happened. So they're gonna ask you questions about the situation. You wanna tell them as much as you can, okay? You want, they're gonna help you do a recovery plan. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna use that information to create a personal recovery plan for you, and they're gonna put that plan into action. Um, so if you create an account, they will walk you through each recovery step, update your plan as needed, track your progress, and pre-fill forms and letters for you. So you actually get templates um, if you go through identitytheft.gov because they have the system already in place, right? So identitytheft.gov is, is the federal government's one-stop source for identity theft victims. The site provides streamlined checklists and sample letters to guide you through the recovery process, okay? Now, the next slide talks about identitytheft.gov. Again, that's free help from uh, this. Uh, and again, we every time we get um, some sort of fraud referral at Social Security telling us that, you know, they need their Social Security number replaced, they feel like they've been a victim of identity theft, we have to refer them to the Federal Trade Commission. And again, that's through identitytheft.gov. A personal recovery plan that walks you through each step. 
They help you with uh, and identify and identify. They help you. They get you an identity theft affidavit so you can review and update it at any time. They have customized pre-filled letters to send to credit bureaus, businesses, and debt collectors. They can update your plan and track your progress, and they can give you advice on what to do if you're affected by specific data breaches. So you definitely want to um, get in touch with them because it looks like they also have a wealth of information because this is what they do, right? Um, like I said, for social security purposes, if you feel um, that you might, you just, your, your credit just, you know, you've been a victim of identity theft, log on to your account just real quickly and see if your information is right. If there has been a change, contact social security right away over the phone, um, or you can try to change it back online with your direct deposit, right? You can go ahead and go back in and change uh, your direct deposit information online because chances are they probably didn't do it online they th probably did it through a different way because you would have access to your online account every time you go on you're going to get an activation code that's going to be texted or emailed to you so you'll know that you're the one that's actually trying to log in in real time right so if you feel if you see something is wrong you can definitely try to change it back online or you can try to go ahead and give us a call. In fact, if you want to just go ahead and block your online account because you have an, you have online access but you're not too sure, then you can go ahead and even request to have us block it for you. And then whenever you feel like you're ready to unblock it, you can go ahead and do that as well. So you have a lot of options with Social Security. Um, pretty much what we can do is we do outreach and education. Uh, we can help you get a replacement card. So for example, if you lose your social security card and now you're a little paranoid, we can definitely help you get a replacement social security card or we can correct your uh, social security number, like with your name, your birth date, you know, your biological information. We can go in with the proofs that you have. We can go in and we can update that, make sure everything is right. We can issue you a new social security number, but that is rare. It has to be in a situation where, pers where a person is going through domestic abuse or something like that. So that's, it has to be pretty severe. We can verify your social security records. Remember when we're looking at social security, we're thinking about your work, right? When you're working and paying into FICA taxes, Federal Insurance Contributions Act, that's allowing you to get your social security, right? So every paycheck that you've worked, um, any self-employment that you've done, you've paid into FICA. You don't pay FICA for unemployment, a social security check, any other type of pension. You only pay it towards if you're working or if you're self-employed, right? And you have to do your taxes through FICA. So that's your Federal Insurance Contributions Act. So of course, we can go through your earnings record to make sure that, you know, these are your earnings, right? And there's nobody else that's tried to um, work under your social security number or something like that, right? Because that also happens, unfortunately. Um, we can correct your earnings record, and of course, we can help you with uh, referrals, right? Um, the reference to the, social, the second social security number, I'm going to go ahead and, and state that these are very specific conditions under which social security may issue a second social security number to the same person. All requirements must be met. So the individual must be disadvantaged by misuse of social security. So it can't be just because you think that, you know, you lost your social security number, you need a new one. It doesn't work like that. They have to be uh, disadvantaged by misuse. Uh, the simple fact of losing your social security number is not misuse. The individual has done all that he or she can do to fix the problem. Uh, proof uh, that to that effect must be provided, of course, like police reports, credit bureau letters, court orders, whatever it is that you needed to do to make sure that, you know, this extra debt or whatever it is that you have going on that you did not, um, you're not responsible for, and you've taken care of that through police reports and, and different um, types of documentation. And then issuance of a new social security number means that an applicant may have time to change all or most of their of important records for a proper matching. So for example, unemployment, banks, creditors, social security, medical. So you wanna make sure, schools, medical. So you wanna make sure that if you get a new social security number that you're gonna go ahead and contact all of these people and you're gonna let them know that, hey, I have a new social security number. So you have to go ahead and make sure you change it with, like I said, employment, if you're working, banks, your creditors, schools, medical records, whatever it is that, whoever has your social security number. And a new social security number is no guarantee that the thief is gonna stop misusing your old social security number and may even have a quick and easy access to your new one. So again, 
you don't really know who you're dealing with. So there's no guarantee that just because you have a new number that they don't, they are not going to be, because they probably have access to other things, right? Social security decides on each application on a case by case basis. So again, you do want to definitely bring as much documentation as possible so that we can help you with that. Um, the next slide talks about correcting your credit report. So we cannot help you with your credit report. For that, you need to contact the different businesses, as I mentioned before, to try to let them know that, you know, that was not you and you have um, probably been a victim of identity theft. We cannot help you file theft reports or act as an advocate. Again, the, I would uh, refer somebody to Federal Trade Commission uh, for that so they can help with that. Now, this next slide is very informational. Um, these are phone numbers to the credit bureau. So if you want direct numbers to Equifax, Experian, TransUnion to report fraud or just to get your credit report, these are the addresses and the phone numbers um, and the websites <laughs> and the credit, how to report your fraud. So like I said, you definitely want to have, um, take some notes if possible um, so that you can go ahead and make sure you have this. So. Sorry to interrupt. Um, so we also, we record all of our Zoom uh, videos and Zoom presentations. So this whole entire uh, presentation will be put on our website in the next couple of days. So certainly jot down things if you'd like, but don't feel like you have to write everything <laughs> real quickly from this slide. But very good. We'll have yeah. it back on as a video um, on our website in a couple of days. Very All good. Right. Oh, that's good to know. Very good. I was feeling like this is a lot of information. <laughs> um, so yes, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So these are the three major credit bureaus that you should contact. It is advisable that you obtain credit records from each of these sources, not just one, but each of them, to determine the extent, extent of the problem, okay? Um, so Pretty much, like I said, you want it. We have the report fraud. We have um, all this information because they all work independently, right? You want to fix your credit with one credit bureau. Just because you're fixing your credit with one bureau doesn't mean that you know it's fixed all the way, right? So you want to make sure you contact all three of them, and that's why you have the report fraud number, the website, and their regular line with their address. Um, again, these are toll-free numbers. Um, and they provide general information as well. So the numbers to call to report fraud are listed on the next slide, which I'm gonna give you. It is recommended that you provide this slide as a handout. So we do, again, we ask you to take notes because we usually do it as a handout in person. Um, fraud, report, fraud resources. If you wanna contact the Federal Trade Commission phone number, that's available right here, 1-877-438-4338. So this is the direct number. So if, you, if you're not wanting to go through online and you want to talk to a person, they will be able to help you. Tax issues. Um, let's say you've been involved in some sort of tax fraud situation. You could visit, that's the link to visit the IRS. And then you can also call that number as well when it comes to tax fraud. Like I said, the website for the Federal Trade Commission is ftc.gov slash ID theft. They'll be able to provide you tips and resources. Again, if you need to, if you've been in a, um, a situation with your driver's license or anything like that, there's a DMV fraud line for your driver's license or your ID. That's the national number for the DMV fraud line. And again, you can always just ask, of course you wanna contact those three credit bureaus independently, but you can always get free credit reports. And again, it's absolutely free through annualcreditreport.com or you can call them. Right, so you have all of these resources right here um, that will be helpful. Okay, so that's it. I am now ready for questions, or if you want to share your story, you're more than welcome to do that as well because it always helps me take things back um, to the administration and let them know hey, this is a situation that's happened. I mean, they can look into it a little bit as well, you know, if it's happening to other people. So, more than welcome for questions or share your story. Yeah. Sure, and just um, so everybody knows, in terms of questions, if you go down to the bottom middle of your screen um, with your cursor, there'll be a chat button. Again, just click on that chat. It'll show up over to the right, and you can type in your question there. So let's see. We have a few things. Um, here's a great question. Many utilities ask for the last four digits of your Social Security number when you call them. Is this necessary or should one be concerned with providing that information? 
So I always think giving out your last four digits, if you know who you're talking to is not an issue. Um, one thing that I do is when people are suspicious, if I'm really social security or not, and I'm trying to help them maybe answer a question on a claim or, you know, try to help them some sort of in a general way or even help them because I've made contact with the workload I'm helping. I usually don't ask them for their full social security number, even though I know it, it's right there and I need to verify them. Sometimes I'll just say, you know what, just give me the last four digits, you know? I'm, so I don't think that's a big concern because they probably have your information on file. Of course, the credit, um, you know, it does affect your credit if you don't pay your bills. Um, so I think giving out the last four digits shouldn't be an issue if, if you're okay with that. If you feel that you want to use alternative, some sort of al uh, alternative identification, you can. Um, you can go ahead and ask them if there's anything else that they can use for you and they might be able to help you. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't really see it as a big concern. Um, I do see the comment about um, direct deposit. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that are cautious. They don't trust banks and they'd rather have the money stored under their mattress. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately it does happen, but absolutely we do recommend and encourage direct deposit. And again, we do have that direct express card as well uh, that provides the MasterCard logo. So you could use it wherever MasterCard is used, but yes, it is rare, but it does happen unfortunately. So yeah. Okay, looks like we have another question. Is there a do not send junk mail phone number many seniors receive donation requests through the mail? I don't know about that. Um, I do know about the do not call list, of course, because you don't want to be uh, like the thing telling you your insurance uh, has your car insurance has expired or something like that. So we do have information on that type of, um, you know, the do not call list, uh, but nothing on um, do not send junk mail. Right. Um, Colleen, I'll look into that, and if I can come up with an answer, I will um, let you guys know. Okay. Um, we have another question. How can you avoid information from getting to third parties? Again, um, well, there is no way. It's up to you. We at Social Security, we will never um, give out your information, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, unfortunately, with a lot of um, companies that you're dealing with, uh, there's a lot of, um, what is it called, fine language, right? And you, you kind of click on things, you accept. A lot of times people, like I said, if you're, uh, you want to read all your documents, right? So a lot of people, they'll just do accept and they'll, they'll enter, right? Accept and they'll confirm. And, you know, a lot of it in that fine line, it has things like, okay, we might, you know, give out your information to a third party. So just make sure that you do try to read everything and you're on it. Um, so that you can go ahead and make sure you try to avoid that or print that. But unfortunately, it's the, the literature is so small that we're all guilty of just saying accept and continue, and we'll just go ahead and continue. Mm -hmm. um, looks like we have another comment um, that says there is an opt-out address on each credit card offer that you get. I guess that's in the mail, and um, she did do that. It took about a week for those four or five creditors uh, to stop contacting. So that's something that's good. You know. Yeah. So th this is very important because you get to share good information with each other. So this is good. Yeah. Well, and a couple of thoughts uh, just from my end, I'm just going to give everybody time if they have any other questions to type in. Um, two things. So uh, my, I used to put all my mail in my mailbox, which sits out, of course, on the corner of the street, um, like everyone else's mailbox does. And they stole some of my uh, bills where I had checks in the mail. And because of that, my, uh, both of my accounts were hacked into, I had to totally redo it. It was it was just a pain in the neck. I didn't end up losing any money because the banks, you know, backed me up and they understood that it was fraud. Um, but because of that, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but either I give the mail directly to the mailman or I actually go to the post office. So I, I don't put mail in my mailbox anymore. Um, now, maybe some people have a door slot. That's great. It comes right into your house, but that's just something uh, to think about and, and remember, you know, especially now when there's more people that are not working and they're they're just out and they're, you know, trying to come up with other ways maybe to get money. Um, that's something that you should certainly think about. And the, the second piece of it is um, email. So we all get 
emails that say all kinds of things and we think they're maybe from our bank or our financial institution a lot of times you can tell right off the bat if it is a um, uh, uh, an email that is from your institution by looking at their address so it may be that you have SunTrust, and so maybe you would normally get an email from uh, financialplanner at suntrust.com. Well, if you get an email from financialplanner at suntrustnumber1.com, right away you know that there's probably something a little bit, uh, you know, you're not quite sure that that email is going to be good, and you don't want to click on it. You don't want to give them information. If you if you want to know more, you can just call the bank directly. But but that's something, and they usually make it so you may not catch that email, but that's the first thing I look at. And because of that, I've been saved a lot of times from clicking on something that where people might have been able to get more information from me, personal information. Right. Absolutely. Yes. De definitely want to make sure who it's from. Uh, click, you know, check out, hover your mouse over the link. Don't click on it, but at least hover over it uh, to see maybe where it would go. But I would not click on it um, unless you are sure it's a trusted uh, source. Absolutely. These are really good tips. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Well, I think we're just, our time is just about up. Um, Thank you, Liz, so much for joining us. I wish we could have seen your face, um, not in person, but that's okay. We'll get to do that sooner or later, and hopefully that will be in person. Of course, we right now, a uh, senior advocate, we don't have any uh, in-person events. This month, we had to cancel a couple. We do have one scheduled for the end of July in Newport News. It's a senior services seminar. I don't know if that's going to take place or not. It's on our website right now, so we're asking people, if you want to sign up, go ahead. We'll make that decision um, at next time as the governor comes out and lets us know what phase we're in. Um, we're hoping we can do it. If we can't, we know eventually we will. We'll continue to do all of these educational seminars. Um, again, you can go to senioradvocate.live, and usually it takes me a day or two once the presentations happen to then post them uh, on the website. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you again, Liz, and everybody have a wonderful weekend, and take care. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.